I'm Royce Matthews, the author of Battle Cries of My Sisters. This book is a book for all women. I believe that every woman has a testimony, every woman has a story. I believe that sometimes women tend to isolate themselves, but God is there with you, God is there for you, and I believe that this book will help you to get to any situation that you may find yourself in. Now that is a loaded question. Let me see how I can answer this simply. Tamara Francis is a woman who has faced a lot of adversity, has fallen flat on her face several times. Um, I think the key to who I am is that I, I keep getting back up, even when it's extremely difficult. I keep getting back up, I keep pushing, and I thought would say Tamara Francis is a fighter. I am a wife, mother of two, grandmother of six. We've been together 50 years and it's just a learning process. It's getting better as time goes on and I love people. Ray Baptist is a um, California native. I'm a military brat. Um, I'm the oldest of four children. I like adventure. I like going places, learning different things about different cultures. Um, and just a family-oriented person. Bridget Tate is a girl from St. Augustine, Florida, Otis City, United States. She is a 20-year retiree of the United States Army Hua. She is also a 15-year retiree from Athens, formerly known as Blue Cross Blue Seal of Georgia. She's also a mother, a wife, a grandmother, an aunt, a sister. Melinda was insecure hurt, broken, a divorced mother of four, but Nalinda now is confident, strong, worthy, loved, and restored. She is a positive person. She finds joy and pleasure in the simpler things in life. She is a builder and encourager and believe the best in others and make them feel good. She is a kind person who do things for people because of who they are, not for what they will do in return, but because who she is. She is a good and loyal friend. She is like stars. You don't always see or hear from her often, but whenever you need her, she comes shining through. Well, Tamara Davis is a woman who at the age of 43, really only find out who she was probably about 10 years ago. Through a lot of hardship, a lot of abuse, a lot of stumbling, a lot of trying the world before I finally found my way in God and found out who I am and whose I am. I am a woman with a story, a woman on a journey to help heal people who have suffered from the things that I suffered from like abuse and addiction. Well, some might say that I'm a little complex. Some might say that I'm very simplistic. But in a nutshell, if I would say who Karan Shah is, Karan Shah is a lover of the Lord. She's a lover of her husband and family. And most of all, she's a lover of people, a philanthropist, if you want to name it as that. I participated in this um, book after um, Royce approached me with the opportunity after helping her with the, her first um, book, The Battle Buddies, which was a great read, actually, and I had a lot of fun helping her get that together. Um, and it, it made me nervous, honestly, because talking about myself is like, because I want everybody in my business. <laughs> I just, I have this thing where, where letting people into Vulnerable spaces isn't something that I do often, so it was it was a vulnerable space even still. I had to take a long hard look because I've seen a lot of things, had a lot of hard knocks, 
And I had to choose which would be the most impactful to people because, I mean, everybody has a testimony. They have to go through things. And I felt like um, me being a part of this project would help someone that was going through the same thing. And so I gave my story and I pray that it helps someone. Oftentimes we feel um, that mothers wear a lot of hats and we do. Um, we're nurturers, we are disciplinaries, we are the ATM, we are the financiers, we are so many things, but a lot of times we don't get to see the mother's heart from our perspective and the things that we tuck away inside and only God knows. And so I wanted to participate to kind of give the idea and the perception that there's more to being a mother than just those things that I named. Um, you get to actually feel the heart of a mother and uh, of a grandmother, if you will. So I just felt that it was uh, necessary for me to participate in that life. Well, when my friend Royce asked me if I would participate in her book, of course I jumped to the opportunity. If my transparency can help anybody overcome or become healed from their addictions or past trauma or abuse, then I feel as though it is my obligation to participate in this project. Also, to participate in my own healing, you know, sometimes you may feel that you're healed about something until you write about it or you tell somebody else and you realize that, hey, I might not have thought about this subject. So doing this helped me and by helping me, I may be able to help somebody else. just finished uh, writing a book with my husband, Battle Buddies, and God gave me this idea while I was finishing Battle Buddies to have a book for women. And it's basically about empowering women, letting other women know that you're not alone with some of the, you know, the issues that women tend to deal with. Because um, a lot of times women will isolate themselves thinking I'm the only one going through this. I don't have any help, nobody understands. And so this book was inspired by wanting to help other women. All of the women in the book, I know them personally. And just with being in relationship with them over the years, I heard a lot of their testimonies. And so I left it up to them as to which story they wanted to tell. And then I just, put it all together, synced it all together, and put a picture of them. Yes and no. Yes, because it's something new. Um, it's something that can help people in the community. But as far as it being the end game, no. I think that it's uh, gonna catapult me into something greater. My faith in this journey seven, well really eight years ago, 2012, when I was diagnosed with um, breast cancer, really made me question who God was in my life. Um, when I was told that I had BC, which is breast cancer, um, I asked him why, why me? And he said, why not you? And I was like, I was mad at him because I've always been a person of faith and um, to get that devastating news was, was a crush and to get it on the same day that we had had um, some type of, um, we was doing a um, prayer service at our church and I got it the same day and um, to come to service and to be able to have to tell my bishop, you know, what I was going through and I wouldn't participate in nothing was going on that night, I was just devastated. But as my walk started, and really it really started all over again because to go through what I had to go through um, I had to have faith in God, no matter what. I had to have faith in my in myself first and first first and foremost, my family who was there for support, and then my church family who was there for me. Um, this it was a very hard journey. I still feel when I, when people I know are going through breast cancer or any type of cancer, I feel personal. I feel a personal thing about it because until you've been there, you don't understand. Excuse me. And um, 
You have to have faith in God. Y'all so sorry. But I tell you what, God is awesome. He got me through this tremendous thing. Even though I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I am cancer free, thank you, Jesus. I had to really test who I was. He really put me through that. And I look back now and I say, okay, Lord, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. And I continue to praise him because this, if you don't have God in your life and you're going through a tremendous thing, like I had to go through with breast cancer, you will never understand. You will never understand. You, people can say, oh, I, I, I feel for you. No, you don't feel for me until you've been there. You don't understand. You got to have God in your life. Specifically, I talked about one of the things I dealt with, which is postpartum depression. It's not a joke, especially in the African-American community. It's so taboo. We don't talk about it. And so I've always said that I wanted to be someone that could be a light or beacon of hope for someone who's dealing with it. Um, and so for me personally, I felt like I, I had to, I had a, a responsibility to share that with other people because there have been so many cases where women have been going through it and had nobody and ended up making mistakes and, and not even just mistakes, but things that they regret for the rest of their life because they didn't have a support system. And so my prayer is that my words can be a light to someone and help them in that dark place. Adjusting to motherhood. Wow, that was a lot of things, a lot of things, a lot more um, responsibility, taking on more responsibility, treating life more seriously, um, being aware that someone's always watching, even when they're not supposed to be watching, <laughs> you're still watching. Um, learning how to show and be and taking into account how everything impacts because it does impact. Well, looking at motherhood now is the most rewarding experience. The challenges and the support played a big factor how I go through now versus what I went through having my first child. It molded it mold and define me to see challenges much easier. It makes me feel joyful, elated, and empowered versus when I had my first child. I felt that I wasn't, wasn't going to be a good mother or not having the support and to make the best decision when I had my first child. Well, you know, God has a way of getting your attention and he prepared you for everything. Um, I was at a, a place in my life when I thought that I knew everything and I thought I could handle everything. But when the situation that came to me happened, God got my full attention. And from that experience, I learned. I didn't know what all I had in me until I was faced with it. And that's the way that it is a lot of times. You don't really know what's there, but God prepares you for everything. And he equipped me with what I needed to go through what I did. It took a lot of time, and it, it, in some areas, it's still taking time. Um, just basically that I'm, that I'm not a failure. Um, big thing growing up, you know, don't waste your time, do it right the first time. You know, make sure you take your time doing it. And even though I took my time with some stuff, it still kind of, I fell on my face. And I felt like there's so much in me, there's so much that I've been taught, there's so much that I know, there's no reason why even half of what I'm pretty much picking up the pieces of or just got finished putting back together, half of that stuff shouldn't have happened based off of what I've been taught and who I'm connected to. And so my whole thing was, uh, you know, there's, there's more in me and the fact that I'm, able to have a second chance to actually fix it and do it right and have the right help. Sometimes I feel like a failure because I do have to do it again, but the fact that it has staying power this time and it's it's residual that I'm fixing it or I'm doing it right and I'm getting the result that I was looking for, it makes me feel like I'm not a failure, even though the first time I did. Every woman has a testimony. Every woman has a story. Just know that you're not alone. 
you're not alone, you're not by yourself, God is there with you. And I believe that Battle Cries of My Sisters is a book that will help you to hear God and to get through your situation.